This is our final story art class. I'm using this Mako piece. This is by Mako and a dash pay. To give the inspiration for the last illustration that we're going to do, and I particularly like the lighting. So in this lighted spot, as I said before, I started the recording, you can put whatever this character is looking at, be it fairies, dragon, unicorn, vampire, werewolf, baby chimera, whatever you want, it will be fine. On my paper, I'm going to sketch out the general composition first, and then we'll start adding some details. Yeah, okay, I get a little blood sugar. Thanks. Oh, time to get some sugar. Yeah. Or carbs, I guess, huh? Not actually sugar. Or does it matter? It's, it's sugar. I'll, I'll just have a boost. Boosts are good. Oh, hey, wait, did I ever show you what I did? On the, I know I didn't. On your did, for the one? last class. Last class. Last story art class? I no, I mean the last, like, the Breath Friday? of the Wild. Want to see him really quick? Sure. Do you want me to stop recording? Oh. It's recording right now. Did you want me to stop it while you show your work? No, I don't. I don't really care about this. No, like, no, I don't, I don't care about this one. All right. The secret. Okay, I did the human thing, which is kind of meh. Then yeah, I, there's a human one bending over. Yeah, there you go. Rito. And then the door, which, like, the breath. Rito, sorry. I'm, I'm, which, honestly, I feel like it's just not very clear what it's supposed to do. What it's supposed to be doing. Uh. I feel like the Goron was the best. I like the Goron the best. Yeah, he uh, came out nice. The Zora, which I said, like, I didn't do a lot. You can still save that one. I think if you just added the legs, it'd be good. And then, my the last Lego. one, Spear Guy. Spear Which's Guy. Awesome. Looks good. Yeah. All right, thanks. I'll stop sharing now. I need to. Oh, there's Stephanie. Let's let her in. There, you got your update. I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, let me show you what we're working on here. This is our last piece for story art. And we're going to draw our trees because we love our trees. And then in this lit area, you can add whatever you want. Little baby unicorn, puppy, squirrel, fairy. Whatever this character is looking at, you're going to put it right in that empty spot right there. Okay. So, so far, I've just sketched out my square composition. Pretty wiggly lines there. I need a ruler. And I'm sketching in my main tree right here. Actually, I think I put it a little too low, so I'm going to erase that bottom part. And this character is standing on a little hill, so I'll add that first. And this tree can grow on the hill. This tree has some kind of crazy roots, so I'm just going to think of it like a giant dragon foot. And there's a toe, 
That's what I thought it was when I heard so. <laughs> I turned the audio off. Oh, we're doing dragons! Oh. <laughs> Good making a giant dragon foot. Hope you're a pet dragon. <laughs> and then we've got our little wizard character that's going to be standing here. So I'm going to start with that winky hat and actually just make a little raindrop shape. That'll be the head. And I've got this nice, just kind of a bell shape for the top part of the cloak. And then another bigger bell shape. I guess cone shape for the rest of the robe. Anything on the inside, we'll just get rid of it. And then, let's see if I can get both of these on here. I'll just hold my paper. We've got a couple more little hills on this side, and we're going to leave that empty space. In fact, let's just sketch it out. We're going to leave this little spotlight for whatever character we're going to add. It's going to be right in there. And then these grassy slopes can go behind it or in front of it, but not touching it. Then we'll add some of these little bush layers. So we've got maybe three different colors of bushes happening in here. So I'll start with this little dark one down here and keep that guy kind of short. Just bouncing my pencil around, kind of fill that in. Next one's going to be taller, but what I don't want to do is just follow the same shape that I just did. I don't want to make it like <laughs> a stripe or a rainbow. I want to make it different. So sometimes I'll just go ahead and mimic the shape first so that I know, okay, don't do that. We got to do something different. So maybe a little bit taller, maybe a little bit shorter, maybe a little bit taller again. And I try to make that shape different than the previous one. And this third layer, just that really bright spot here and there, doesn't show up too much. So I'll just have a little peeking out right there, maybe a little more peeking out over here. And there's my three layers. Then we've got this other younger tree growing out away from our first big one. Let me back up my camera a little bit here. I'm going to curve that tree because as we learned with our last tree class, trees don't always grow straight up and down. They can curve and twist and bend. But this particular tree is covered in all this greenery, this moss, these little saplings starting to grow out from it. So we're going to start putting some patchy green spots on here. Just like the bushes that we did, just kind of bouncing your pencil around. Bounce my pencil around. Try not to do the same thing over and over. These were already looking kind of the same triangle-y type shapes. So I moved my secondary shape off to the side, made it smaller. I'll put a patch up there, I'll put a patch over there. 
just making it spotty. Anytime it comes to the edge, you can have a couple of those fibers hanging downward. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about better. Rather than just coming to the edge and stopping, I can bunch that up, make it bumpy, make it a different texture. And then I'll leave the wood smooth where the tree is sticking out. And then we'll have some little baby branches, little saplings starting to grow. I'll put one right here growing up, 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 and ending in two little leaves. I'll come back down and make it a little bit thicker where it goes into the tree. And it has another little branch sprouting off. I'm not going to copy it, so if I put two leaves again, it looks a little funny. So I'm going to put a third leaf so it's different. And if I add another little branch down here, I have to choose a different number of leaves. I don't know if I can fit more than two, so I'll just leave it at one. I'll have another little sapling down here. So I do my first branch, just kind of growing on up, sticking it a little bit at the base. And somewhere along the way, I decided to send out another shoot, another branch. And we don't want it to be exactly the same on both sides, so maybe this side will have a third little spring coming off. And then we get to put on some leaves. Since this one's a little bit bigger than our first one, it'll probably have more leaves. So I can just do it in a little bit of a starburst pattern. Have some leaves hanging down there. Have some leaves hanging down there. A couple sticking up in the air. And then we'll have another one that's a little older coming out behind the bushes. So it's growing on up that way. Got a little bit thicker at the base. Sent off a branch that way. Sent off another branch this way. Maybe one more time. And maybe one more time over here. And then we'll add our leaves. might be some random single leaves growing off in different spots as well. We're just trying to make the two sides different. If I were to go down this whole stem putting a leaf on that side, leaf on that side, leaf on that side, leaf on that side, it starts looking like a flower more than a tree. 
So don't do that. You want to try to keep each side different, unique. Then behind both this tree and these little trees, there's a great big massive tree. I don't know if you can see it. This one right here. Ooh, huge, dark in the back. So I'm just going to indicate it very lightly. This is going to be this big massive tree back here. It goes all the way over to this side. So I want to put some texture in it. I can put some lines going vertically, and then I can also do a little bit of that cross contour to bring out these different ridges of this big massive trunk. Okay, you lost me. I lost you, okay. I'll go over here and do it. Okay, that's, oh, I see, I think I see. You think you see it? That's huge, yeah. This one right here is huge yeah. tree right here, right in the back. Then there has to be something else behind that tree. So in our original picture here. You can see she almost treats it like clouds, but by coloring it green, it just looks like more foliage back there in that forest. So I can do the same thing on my drawing. It's kind of pretending that they're really spiky, sort of clumpy clouds. Go right behind that giant tree. Another one below that one. Something like that, just to fill in and break up that big negative space. It's hard making that little tree not look like it's part of that, or the big tree not part of the little tree. Yeah. But once we get some lighting on here, it'll it'll stand out more. Okay. Hey Betsy, did you get the new update? New update of? Oh, never mind. You're not digital. Never mind, because my thing is acting weird. Oh, your file pack is acting weird. Yeah, or maybe this is a new feature. I don't understand. I don't know. Did anybody else have trouble with their Zoom? thing saying you had to reload and all that mess? No, and not for 45 minutes or whatever it was either. No. Crazy. Okay, Betsy, I, I think my lines look like suture lines. Let me, that tree. Let me pin your video and take a look. Is there anything I can do or should I'm doing wrong there? Uh, they're just a little bit straight. Like maybe if you curve them. A little uh, more. They'll look a little less like stitches. Okay. A little more like texture. Okay. Looking at mine, I see that you were doing very good to copy me, but I did them straight also, so I'll change them too. <laughs> so let's just try curving some of these. Maybe downward. That might look a little better. Probably shouldn't mirror them though. How do we... Yeah, I made him too short, too. Um... Yeah, actually, if you wanted to, you could just go all the way around. Oh, okay. oh you, could. you can do that. It's just you got to be careful not to make them look like candy cane stripes. 
Oh. So you have to make each one like a different system. One, one big tree behind there or several? Just one, just one big tree behind there, but it has like a rounded sort of scalloped stump. <laughs> okay. So if you cut it down and you looked at its tree rings, it would be something like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've got that bumpy. Okay. That bumpy texture going on there. Down here, I thought this was a rock, but then I just noticed that this branch is coming out of it, so it must be a root. So we'll go ahead and turn this into a root by just cutting out a little section here. And adding that. Oh, I see. A little offshoot coming off to the side here. Another little fork. I'm going right into that grass. So on this one too, we can do that curving kind of texture. Nope, that one looks a little too much like stripes. See how it can real quickly turn into a candy cane there if you just make all your contours evenly spaced. Don't want that. And then over here, this grass right here is closer to us and so it's a larger size than all of this grass over here. We're going to make those two grass clumps and just make these by the spotlight a little smaller. Right around that ring where there's a spotlight. And then over here, I'll get rid of my guideline. I'll draw that grass just bigger. Same little clumps, same little swishy motion. Just bigger. Same thing on this side. We've seen this artist draw these like cloverish sort of plants before, and because they're very close to us, they're quite large. Grass is quite large, and then by the time you get behind the wizard character, the grass is small again. We're going to do that on ours. Down here, I'll put some rather large clover shapes. I'm trying to keep it flat and not doing this, not doing it standing up like it's pressed in a flower book and want it squashed. Overlapping or underlapping, depending on how you see it. Put some other shapes underneath. And if I draw this very same plant way over here, it's going to be much, much smaller. This 
and grass by the clover, nice and tall and big. Maybe even some kind of wildflower starting to grow. That same grass all the way behind the wizard, very small. The same flower buds will barely see them. In this uh, negative space over here, I also have to include some of that bush or some grass or something just to continue that landscape in the back. Just bounce your pencil around. Don't think about it too hard. I feel bad because I'm low blood sugar right now, so my brain isn't isn't like functioning 100%. So. You're gonna go get a boost or something? Did you get it? Yeah, I did. It just takes. Oh, it takes a while to get into your system. Yep. Yeah, and also I'm not 100% sure if, if what I drank was enough. Oh, well, if you have to go get something else, go right ahead. No, I just gotta wait to see what happens. Uh. And if she does too much, then she'll shoot her sugar. Oh, uh, too high, right? And then, yeah, you got to bring it back down again. Yeah. Then we'll work on our little lizard character here. The wizard character doesn't have too much detail. We've just got this lighter pattern on the top of the shoulders. We'll add a little Charlie Brown zigzag right at the bottom. And there's a hood on this cloak, so we're going to add this droopy little shape right across the top here. Just drooping right over the shoulders. And we can see one arm, but it's nice and easy because it's very simple shapes. We've got basically a little square that's skin colored. Then we've got another little square that looks like it's metal, like some kind of metal little gauntlet or bracelet. And then we've got the last little square, which is the hand in a fist. And all we have to do is add two little points on this side for a thumb and a finger. And then with the rest, we can make a little square and that'll be the hand. And even though we can't see the other hand, we can see the staff that isn't just standing there by magic, so she must be holding it with her other hand. We'll put a little circle for a little orb on the end and just have the stick going back behind her. You can either even stick out the other side, depending on how long you want it to be.
And then for the bottom of the robe, we're just going to add a little bit of a wrinkle, a little bit like when we do the flags. And we have that very subtle curve on the end. I'll try to erase that out so you can see it better. And then from each curve, we'll take a line and go it and move it up. Take a line, move it up. So we've got a little bit of fabric action happening there. And we're not even going to draw feet. We're just going to put a little shadow right underneath. And magically, our brains will fill in that there must be some feet under there. Or she's floating. Looks she's like she's floating. That's true. You could add a little shoe in here then. <laughs> I, didn't think, I didn't think of floating. There we go. Tiny little sliver of a shoe. Whoops, I can't even see it. I'll try erasing it out better. Floating is cool. The floating is cool too. So there you go. You leave a little sliver of a shape or she's floating and that's cool too. Then for the face, you're going to need a very, very sharp pencil. We get into these little nooks and crannies, but we're not going to do too much detail if we look at this one. She's basically just got an eye, an ear, some hair, and then her hat has two different colors, but no nose, no mouth. We'll just add a little dark spot here for an eye. Go around for an ear. Anything in the back of the head here, I'm just going to color it in so we can see it better. It's going to be hair and you can add a little ponytail or braid, but it's going to go right behind the hood so you don't have to draw very much. And then you can separate the colors on her hat. You can do the little zigzag again or you can just go straight across. That's up to you. Then we just have to give some texture to this tree and fill in this spot with another character. So for this big tree, there's some lovely texture going on in here, even though it's in the dark. Let's see if I zoom in real close. So again, we've got these big twisted trunks that have these lines that show us that this part is round and then this part is round and this part is round and that part is round. So we're going to start off with the vertical lines that kind of divide up these different uh, bumps, ridges, <laughs> right? these different sections and then we'll come back and we'll add in this texture to show which way it's going. So on my tree here, zoom out, I'm basically going to go up from the root. So there's this one root right here, this one dragon toe. If it just kept going up, up, up behind my wizard, and it would keep going up, 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 up. And if I took this one and I kept going up, and it came in and up and twisting around, I might go that way. And I have a little bit left here, so I'm just going to divide it up in an interesting way. Like that. So down at the roots here, I'm going to start adding some texture lines going around this root. not quite reaching all the way to the top and I'm keeping the lines broken meaning I'm not going from top to bottom in one big solid line I'm leaving little gaps here and there which you can do by just taking your eraser and erasing parts too or you can draw them that way 
So I'm going to do that all the way up this line here. Trying to make them look random. And clustered and grouped in some areas and far away in other areas. On this section, I'll do the same thing, but I'm going to change the angle. So on this one, it was kind of going at this angle, but now I'm going to change it to a steeper angle. So all of my lines are going to be a little more tilted. I'm going to add some on the edge as well, just twisting around in the opposite direction. So I had these kind of curving a little bit up and then these are curving a little bit down to show some twisted trunk action. And just like we had moss on this tree, if every once in a while you want a patch of moss, you can just go ahead and add a little furry texture in there. Next one, again, I'm going to change the direction of my lines a little bit so that it shows that this is going in a different direction, a different plane of perspective. And the last one, I'll just throw in a couple of lines. The ones at the back you don't see as much, so they don't matter as much. And now we must decide what is in this ring of light. Any ideas? Fairies, always fairies. Fairies, always fairies. All right, we can do some fairies. Shall they be dancing in a little mushroom ring or should they be flying? I did the fairy part. You gotta do the rest. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we'll do a little toadstool fairy ring instead of this grass here. Actually, I can leave the grass. I'm gonna start incorporating some toadstools. Maybe a little rounded shape, little stem, maybe a spot or two. No mushroom over here. Another mushroom over here. Some of them grow in clusters, right? So I can put a couple of mushrooms together. The ones on the far side are going to be smaller. I'm just going to indicate general mushroomy type shapes. I have a general ring of mushrooms. And then for the fairies, I'm going to do a ball of light. How do we draw a ball of light? You erase out a section. And we're going to put little starburst lines all pointing towards the center. And add some wings to it. It'll make more sense when it's in color. So 
but for now we'll just put these little starbursts with some wings. You can manage to draw a little humanoid shape this small. Good luck. See if I can do it. Tiny little fairy dancing away. Wing. Wing. Oh, so tiny. And also surrounded by light. <laughs> Get your fairies in. Now comes the fun part where we can put in the lighting. I'm going to get my colored pencils to do this part. And I'm also going to roll my kneading eraser between my hands, make like a little rolling pin, and I'm going to roll it all over my drawing to get some of the extra graphite to come up so it won't muddy my colors. Lighten that all up. And most important color is going to be the color of the fairies. Probably not green because the rest of the forest is so green. I'm going to probably pick pink or purple, maybe pink. That might be nice. Depends on the color of my colored pencil, honestly. If it's a weird pink, then no. Or I gotta find some other colored pencils. Eh, yeah, that's a little weird. Gotta find more colored pencils. Lucky for me, I just organized my art supply drawer so I know exactly where it is. Holy cow, the world's <laughs> Wow. There we go. That's it. <laughs> just know where it is six hours later. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to choose my fairy light color. I've chosen pink, but you can do anything that's not green and not yellow. Those will kind of blend in with the background, but any other color is fine. So I'm going to get my pink pencil here and I'm going to leave the center white. I'm just going to color around each of my little fairy lights. Oh, I only drew four fairies. Even numbers kind of look weird sometimes. I'm going to add one more over here just for fun. Just to uneven it out. Now each of these fairies is like a little light bulb. And we can imagine that the light is shining off of this fairy, going, 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 traveling until it hits something like this root. So then on this root, I'll actually color some pink. And it comes off this fairy, comes off until it hits this root back here. Put a little pink. This fairy by this root. I'm going to cast some pink. Depending on how bright it is, it might even catch on this tree back here, or a little bit on the bushes where the leaves are. 
some color in pink. Coming off this very traveling, traveling, traveling. Oh, it hit this leaf. Traveling, traveling, traveling. Oh, hit that leaf. And of course, on the ground where they're all gathering and dancing, that's going to be pink or whatever or color you have chosen for your fairies. That's going to be all radiated with pink. There's pink, 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 pink. Then the grass, which is green, you're going to need maybe three greens. If you don't have three greens, you're going to have to control it with your pressure. Or you can layer it with a brown. That will also work. In fact, let's do the brown method just in case you don't have a bunch of greens. With my brown pencil, I'm going to lay down the shadows. So this fairy here is casting this pink light onto this pink mushroom, or onto this mushroom, so this side is pink. So the cast shadow on the opposite side is going to be brown. I'm just going to lightly color in that cast shadow. But just like a clock, these fairies that are in the center, if it goes down, hits this mushroom, then the shadow will come off this way. This shadow will come off this way. And so the angle as it goes around will start changing. If the grass is tall enough, the grass can cause some shadows as well, thinner ones. Thinking in all directions there. And then I'll grab my green. See, I've got like an olive green and then I've got a really bright green. Neither one is exactly what I wanted. Hmm. Let's go with just the brighter green. So then with my green, I'm going to layer right over that brown. Nope, that's not working. Let's get that olive green. Try that instead. A little bit better. Ooh, looks so mucky on the screen there. It's an olive green. Except that graphite makes it look yucky, huh? Yeah. This is usually why we ink our art first before coloring it, just so that we can get rid of all that graphite and it won't mix in with our colors. Okay. I won't be lazy. I'll find my eraser <laughs> next time. <laughs> This grass is really, really close to me. I'm going to try to do a darker color than the one I was previously doing. It's just brighter though. That's not darker. Let's get my brown. Dull it down a little bit. This is when I really miss digital, where I could pick any color I ever wanted <laughs> right at my fingertips. I'm like, nope, you get this or that. 
No mixing. No real mixing. I mean, you can kind of layer, but not like digital. And this tree, rather than brown, brown will stick out too much. I'm going to grab a gray and I'm going to stick some gray into this big giant root here, just a light coating. And you can see that I'm leaving this little rim of white all the way down the edge so that we can use another color to show the light. Getting that tree, just the natural sunlight or whatever kind of light is around, not the fairy light. I happen to have a very bright green that I'm going to use for the natural light hitting the foliage just on those few pieces of bush that we added at the end on that third layer. Just maybe that much. And I'll switch back to my darker green for the rest of this that's in shadow. Covered up your flowers. Oops. Didn't you? I did. 
well, they're going to be a darker color. <laughs> blue. Maybe we'll put in a little blue there. I also lost the shape of all my clovers down here that I so painstakingly drew. Get it in first. <laughs> Color those in there. Indication. Indication of some clover down there. I'll use my gray pencil to color my wizard character also just to dull down the colors. I know if I use blue, it's going to be so bright. It looks like she's standing in the light. I don't want her standing in the light. So we're going to color this all with a layer of gray. And I bring out my blue and I just use a very light touch. Hopefully these two will mix a little bit. Stay dark. A tan for the other color. Oops, I think her hood is blue too. And as we go further back in layers, we want it to get darker. So I'm going to use that gray again, and I'm going to press a little harder. So it's darker than the gray on the tree. Put down that first layer, and then I can come back with green or blue or whatever color. It'll automatically be darker just because of that first layer of gray. Following my inspiration picture, all the little sapling leaves, they're a nice bright color with that light shining in between the trees. So I'm going to go ahead and color them a nice bright green. Also the edge of the tree here also getting hit by some speckles of light. So we can add that on the edge. And again, I'll add a light layer of gray to that tree, darken it up a little bit. Your big humongous tree or the little, oh no, it's a skinny. No, the littler one with the saplings growing out, yeah. 
And the rest of the moss will be my darker green so that we can see the shadowy side and the bright side. And I'll get a kind of a tan, not too strong of a brown, and just very lightly go over the trunk so it doesn't get too bright. We want those fairies to be the brightest thing on the page. But everything else has to be dulled down, muted. And the sapling coming out of the bush, this is where we start to see some leaves in shadow and some in light. So we know that's kind of the edge of the light beam. So on mine, I've got kind of the lower half. I'm kind of splitting it right there. I've got the lower half bright green, and then these back here are going to be the darker green in the shade. And that big massive tree behind is going to be darker than anything in front of it. So I'm going to take my gray pencil again, kind of medium pressure. What did you say, Betsy? It's going to be darker? Darker than anything in front of it. So this tree right here that we just finished coloring with all the moss, that one has to be lighter than anything of the tree behind it. Instead of brown, I think I'm going to grab my olive green and go right over this trunk so that it doesn't stand out as much.
Or you can just leave it gray too, but if you're thinking, eh, it looks kind of dull, it needs a little bit of a boost, try going lightly over it with some dark green. And behind this tree, I'm going to have black in between the bushy shapes. It's the furthest away and therefore the darkest. Or you can also just use your gray pencil and press down a little harder. Sometimes the black will be so intense that it'll kind of pop forward and we don't want that. I'm going to take my gray again and darken down those background blobs. I'm going to put a layer of green over it so that we know it's foliage. With this root here, we have some that's going to be in dark, and then as it gets closer to the fairies, it's going to be lighter. So just like we used to do in our warm-ups where we would press really hard with our pencil, and then we'd get lighter, 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 lighter. That's what we're going to do on this root. Same thing with the green. I'm going to start out dark on the edge. Pressing, 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 getting lighter, 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 lighter.
if you want to make this scepter glow a little bit, you can add a ring of color just right around that sphere there. It's not me snoring, that's my dog. <laughs> Doggy. I know, poor guy. Granny wore him out today. Hard keeping up. Better than them barking and carrying on. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not my favorite from this series, but not too bad. I think it just needs to be inked first to save all our line work. I had fun. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> delete, delete, delete. Forget that. I didn't say that. This is the very last story art class. You made it. And I've already updated the calendar, so you can go and check out the new classes coming in July. And I've even been more organized than usual and put the topic of each individual day. Just in case you missed a class, now you'll know what you missed. Wow. No, no signs of going back to the studio yet, right? No, and from what I'm hearing on the news, it sounds like San Joaquin County is getting a rise on COVID cases rather than a Good. Decline. Let's get it done and over with, like flu season. I know. That's why I was with you. Right the freaking thing Wash yeah. their hands. Stop my, the others. <laughs> yeah, my mom. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, my mom was talking about how we're probably not going to go out yeah. for a long time. And then, like, at least till the vaccine, not even in, when the vaccine comes out, like, we're going to wait, like, a week or a month after the vaccine comes out to see if there are any side effects. And then we'll take the vaccine, and then we'll, and then we'll go out. Yeah. It takes a while to build up your immunity, just like people who get the flu vaccine, and they come down with the flu in a day or two. It's because they've already been exposed. It takes two weeks to build up your immunities with the vaccines. I don't know about the COVID, but with the flu vaccine, it takes two weeks. Two weeks, got it. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's, that's my mom's logic anyway. Well, sounds smart though. Better safe than sorry.
Ooh, I, what what's next? Fairies? Yeah, in this time slot it's gonna be flower fairies. In the anatomy class, it's changing to drawing whimsical houses. And then the Friday classes are going to change from big cats to dinosaurs and from character design to animal character design. I really learned a lot in that anatomy class. I want to thank you for doing that, Betsy. Oh, good. I'm glad. I learned a lot. You gave me a lot of confidence. Maybe I'm founded, but I don't care. It was. <laughs> Just about seven minutes left. Anything you want to share, Michaela? No, thanks. My, my thing messed me up, so I don't think it's... Oh, okay. Got it. I'll share. I'll share. All right. Let me pin your video I'll here. I'll share. I'd like to see Michaela's face. <laughs> oh. Michaela, you need a bunny to keep you through this time. I have some. <laughs> no, my... No. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's all you need. No. <laughs> no, maybe. No. Thank you. If but I didn't no. have any pets, then maybe. But man, I've already got like two dogs who need like care, and a cat who's relatively well off. But you know. Okay. Well, hey, that came out pretty good, huh? Yeah, I'm saying that's I really enjoyed it. And it was like. Yeah. I really like that. Thank you. Draw, draw, draw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks I, nice. Yeah. Parting with it probably make it worse, but it's hard to get the colors not to blend in with the trees. Yeah. That's the only problem with colored pencils. Either you have to have like a hundred different colors to get just the one you want, or you just have to uh, have to be careful about those colors. Getting too That's dark, okay. too light, too muddy. One hour of, let's see what we can do. I mean, come on. Yeah. Wait. Working with what we got. Yeah.